Hey there, I pray this video encourages you and helps you grow and become more like Jesus. Follow along with the notes linked in the description. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Enjoy. Now, what's really, what's really neat though is the message today is uh, the wonder of his word. The wonder of his word. So it's interesting that we had a prophetic word like that. I wanna talk about the wonder of Christmas for the next few weeks, and in particular, the wonder of his word today. When I was reading the Bible last year, and I was reading again this year, reading the Christmas narratives, the stories of the birth of Christ, I just got this fresh awe and, and wonder of God's handiwork in the whole story of Jesus' birth. All the things he did through speaking things and through working things out and the wonder of his hands and the wonder of his love. And I just wanna encourage you today, right in the beginning, that God has things under control. When you read the Christmas story, oh my goodness, what he did to bring about Jesus, to bring our salvation into this world, it is amazing. So we're, we're, we're gonna get into that, but today the emphasis is gonna be on his word, what he spoke to us and who the word of God is. And so let's go to Luke chapter one. If you have your Bibles or on the screen, we will have it, Luke chapter one. And we actually need to begin with Elizabeth and Zachariah before we get into Mary and Joseph. All right, Luke chapter one, uh, verse five is where we're gonna start because the Christmas story actually begins before Mary and Joseph and the birth of Jesus. And this context is really important. This setup for the birth of Jesus is so important. And in verse five, it says this, when Herod was king of Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah and his wife Elizabeth was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive, and they were both very old. One day, Zechariah was serving God in the temple. For his order, his group of priests was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priests, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. And rightly so, Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. And let me pause for a moment. It's been 400 years. God has been silent. The last book of the Old Testament is Malachi. The first book of the New Testament is Matthew. Between that period, there was 400 years, there was no prophecy, God was quiet, and all of a sudden, in a temple, with a priest, God speaks again. The wonder of God and the wonder of his word coming into the scene here of our scripture. Now apparently, at some point, Zechariah and Elizabeth have been praying for a child, but now that time has passed, but now the angel's saying, he has heard your prayer. Can you imagine how long that was? Oh, I, well God, I prayed that like 50 years ago. That's interesting. Hold on to that though, okay? Verse 14, you will have great joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. Now by the way, this isn't Jesus. We're gonna find out this is John the Baptist. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth and he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now, and my wife is also well along in years. Then the angel said, this is, wow, this is powerful. Let this soak in. I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. 
It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. The wonder of his word. God spoke to Gabriel and said, send this message to Zechariah and Elizabeth. Go and do that. So at some point, God sent Gabriel from his presence down to earth to speak to Zechariah and Elizabeth and answer a prayer he had prayed so long ago. The wonder of his word. But now, verse 20, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. This is sort of a judgment or punishment, but at the same time, it serves as a sign. It's an interesting dynamic here. You're going to, you're going to go through this being mute until, the, until your son is born as a sign of this whole thing. This will be the sign for you, okay? That's a, it's interesting how God does that. His ways are not our ways, okay? For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time, certainly will be fulfilled at the proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out of the sanctuary, wondering why he was taking so long. When he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to them. Now, the first service, I accidentally said the wrong one. I said Abrahamic um, uh, speech. It's the Aaronic, the Aaron. Aaron would come out and bless them after he would go into the temple. And uh, he couldn't do that this time. So they're waiting for him to, to share this blessing from the priest, peace be upon them, and all those things. And he couldn't do it. He was mute. And so they're like, whoa, something happened. Okay? So he, verse 21 again. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out of the sanctuary, wondering why he was taking so long. When he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to them. Then they realized from his gestures and his silence that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary. When Zechariah's week of service in the temple was over, he returned home. Soon afterward, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. How kind the Lord is, she exclaimed. He has taken away my disgrace of having no children. So Elizabeth has a secret and she's kind of staying in seclusion and no one knows, but not so fast, Elizabeth. Let's go to the next verse, verse 26. Because now an angel is going to visit Mary. Okay, so you have, you have a couple who a miracle is taking place with them. A baby is going to be born to them. Now this baby is John the Baptist and he would be a forerunner who would prepare people to listen to Jesus. Okay, and he also would help people turn towards God. And, and uh, John the Baptist would point people to Jesus and God, not himself as a prophet. All right, and there's some similarities here. An angel shows up, tells them what to name their son. It's John. We're about to see an angel do the same thing for Mary and Joseph. All right, there's some differences though where Zechariah doubts that this could happen and do you kind of blame him? (laughs) That's tough. You know, sometimes God will do some things and say some some things that's gonna stretch your faith And, and whether you believe or not is on us. It's on you or or myself. So with Mary, it's a different story here. Let's go into verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor or grace with God. So God's chosen her to do this in this moment. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Now she would have an idea of what they're talking about, what what God is talking about, what the angel's saying. He's the Messiah. He's the promised one that would come in the line of King David. So did Mary know? Mary, did you know? (laughs) Probably. All he would do, probably not. But does she have an idea? Yeah. I know, that's, that's a rhetorical question in that song. 
isn't it? Anyway, sidetrack, okay. Mary asked the Lord, how can this happen? I'm a virgin. It's a good question, right? And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. All right, so the, the Greek here is the same Greek in Acts 2 when the Holy Spirit came upon his church in the upper room praying and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. It's the same wording here. The Holy Spirit will come upon her and create life inside her stomach, inside her womb. There comes the rain. Like that, the Holy Spirit came upon her. All right. So the baby to be born will be holy. There he is, perfect. And he will be called the son of God. What's more, your relative, here's, okay, here's the sign for Mary. Your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age, exclamation point. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. Verse 37, for the word of God will never fail. Some, some translations say nothing's impossible for God right here in this verse. Wow. You know, when God gives a, a, a word that's just out of this world, that just uh, seems impossible, sometimes he gives confirmation. Sometimes he doesn't. To see our faith. In this story, to be a virgin and to be pregnant, I think, I'm, I think if I'm Joseph, I'm asking for some confirmation too. <laughs> Ladies, you probably want some confirmation from God too. God in his grace gave her confirmation. When you go see your, your uh, relative Elizabeth, she's gonna be pregnant and that's impossible. It's impossible for her to be pregnant. She's in her older age, but that's what's gonna happen. She's gonna be pregnant and Mary's gonna see that and it's gonna be confirmation that even I can be pregnant. Do you see how God's working? I call God the great composer of Christmas composing this beautiful song, this orchestra, just putting all the pieces together and, and when he puts his conductor hands up, a beautiful story comes in, a beautiful song played. And it's the story of the birth of Christ. And God is working all these details out. We'll learn more about that next week as well. Okay, I think I lost my place getting into it. I love that. Oh, verse 38. Now this is a response for the ages that we can learn from. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Wow, that's faith. A few days later, keep going, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea to the town where Zechariah lived. So she was in a hurry, you see. <laughs> She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, we read earlier that John the Baptist would be filled with the Holy Spirit before birth. We believe this is when it happened. How powerful is Jesus that as a baby, he's baptizing people in the Holy Spirit? That's the wonder of Christmas. Think about that. In the presence of Jesus, a baby in Elizabeth is worshiping. That's why I'm pro-life. Because there's life in the womb ready to worship. But there's a miracle that takes place here. The filling of the Holy Spirit in John the Baptist's life. Before he was even born. That was a word from God sent by Gabriel. How could it come true? Right there. The wonder of his word. Wow. There you have it. There's the answer if you're looking for it. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. Did you hear that? Did you see that? You are blessed. Oh, put that back up for me real quick. Just real quick. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. The wonder of his word is believable. 
Now, I think Joseph has some questions. Let's go to Matthew chapter one. If you would, you go backwards in your Bible. Matthew chapter one, if you're in Luke, you're gonna go back a couple books. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So Matthew chapter one, verse 18. I think the other half needs to know what's going on. Would you say a good marriage requires good communication? Okay. Good marriage requires good communication. And this is going to require some divine intervention. The wonders of Christmas. Verse 18, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. So Matthew 1:18, his mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, everyone stop for a second. There's kind of like three phases to marriage back in this time. There is an engagement that could be um, instituted by the parents, and they would engage their children to each other. Believe it or not, it was, they, would, they would work it out, all right? And then there was betrothal. Betrothal was a year-long process where they were considered actually married, but they were not allowed to share the bed, and they had distance from each other, and they had to remain pure. Now, to God, uh, sexual immorality is, is to have sex before marriage, okay, one, one form of it. So premarital sex was prohibited, all right? If someone did and they were found to be pregnant, the Old Testament law actually shows and says that they could be stoned to death for adultery because they, they were not to be around each other for a whole year and share the marriage bed. So just think about this. Joseph is probably perplexed and confused. How is my wife to be pregnant? We haven't been around each other. Are you following me? Okay. So parents, sorry if you have to explain some things later. Okay. So, you're probably going to need some divine intervention. Probably going to need another word from the Lord. What's happening here? Okay. So, verse 20. Okay, he, this is what he says, though, uh, in verse 19. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. Now, that's a really noble thing of Joseph. He doesn't want her to be killed. He doesn't want her to be publicly uh, shamed, so he wants to divorce her quietly. So he's ready to cut this thing off because she's pregnant. So you can see right there the human nature is, how could this be? Okay, this is proving that she was pregnant and he's ready to divorce her, all right? As he considered this, just think about that for a moment. I know I'm stopping a lot during the scripture, but think about this for a second. God knows what you're thinking. He knows your heart, he knows what you're thinking. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, like that, in a dream. He's sleeping and he gets a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? Okay, the Holy Spirit was in the beginning of time creating earth. When God commanded things to be done, they were done. God spoke our world into existence. God's commands create life. The agent of that creation was the Holy Spirit. That's what, that's what we believe in Christianity. The agent of God's creation here in this moment is the Holy Spirit came over her and created life in her womb. That's it. That's it, that's what happened. And in her, in her body is Jesus, okay? F fully man through Mary, fully God through God, through the Holy Spirit. An important doctrine of the church. Fully man and fully God at the same time, okay? So this is a beautiful interaction where the Holy Spirit comes on her, creates life in her stomach, and she will have a son, he says, verse 21, and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. So there you have it. Going back to the word we heard earlier, he came for sinners, church. And so we should go after sinners and help them know that God loves them, forgives them, and wants to change their life from the inside out, transform their lives, all right? Verse 22, all this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet, Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. What is that? 
That's actually from Isaiah 7, 14. Here's what it says. All right, then the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and you will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. That's prophesied. A word through a prophet of God, Isaiah, 700 years before Jesus is born. The wonder of his word. Okay, verse 24, when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife, but he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. Gentlemen, have faith like that. When you read the Bible, do what it says. Ladies, have faith like Mary. When you read the Bible, do what it says. Trust it. Trust God's word. They are great examples for us. Let's, let's capture, though, let's do a quick review of the wonder of Christmas and the wonder of God's word here, okay? 400 years of silence, all of a sudden God breaks through and speaks loudly about a child for Zechariah and Elizabeth. This angel speaks at the temple. A priest is made mute as a sign. He's supposed to be able to speak and bless the people as they're listening. The people take note that something significant happened. Grace is given for a long lost dream to have a child. A long forgotten prayer has now been answered by the grace of God. And now another angel visits a young virgin. This virgin is to be pregnant through the work of the Holy Spirit. You have a groom on the verge of divorce, but an angel intercedes and a successful marriage intervention takes place. Mary and Joseph show exemplary faith that can move mountains. A miracle baby will be born to be a miracle worker in our world, fully man and fully God. Church, this is the wonder of his word at work in history. Angels from above, the prophecy of old and prophets of that day, all to bring us God in flesh appearing, Jesus Christ, who we also know as the word of God. God fulfilled his word. He did what he said he would do. And he gave us the word of life, the word of God. Look at what John 1.14 says. So the word became flesh and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of, of the Father's one and only Son. Jesus is the word of God. Do you know that Jesus was in the beginning creating everything? That's Colossians chapter one. You can read it. He was in the beginning creating everything. Same thing with John one. It says it in the beginning in verse one and two and three. He was in the beginning creating everything. The word of God became human and made his home among us. Praise the Lord. Why did he come? He came to give us the word. He came to teach us about the good news. He came to tell us how to know God and how to have eternal life. He came in this world and he spoke his word. Did everyone believe? No. Has everyone believed yet? No. If we do though, this is what the word of God says in John 5, 24. I tell you the truth, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death to life. Praise God for that. Do you believe that? Now think about that for a moment. Jesus said that to Jewish leaders and people who were listening to him. He had skeptics all around him, Jewish skeptics, okay? They were leaders, they were priests. They were not seeing eye to eye with him at all. They did not think he was the Messiah. And he's saying, if you believe this, you've already passed from death to life. You have eternal life if you believe the message about me and believe in God. Church, that is what saves us, is by faith in Christ we are saved. Believe in this truth. And from there, we will change, and we should change, and we should repent, and we should follow Christ and live a new life, okay? But I want you to understand this, and I just want you to really grasp this today. This is true. This is true. The key is your life will agree with it and change with it. When you believe it's true, when you truly take and receive that word, 
it would change your life. Amen. And all God's people in this place say amen. amen. It's changed your life, right? Amen. It's changed my life. When I agreed with this scripture, it changed my life. Now let me show you the skepticism. John chapter five, I'm gonna have it on the screen for you. John 5, 31 through 40. If I were to testify on my own behalf, my testimony would not be valid, but someone else is also testifying about me, and I assure you that everything he says about me is true. In fact, you sent investigators to listen to John the Baptist. There he is, the baby that was born, right, around the same time with Elizabeth and Zechariah, same baby. He was a forerunner. He was speaking for, about Jesus. And his testimony about me was true. So there's a witness. Of course, I have no need of human witnesses, but I say these things so that you might be saved. John was like a burning and shining lamp, and you were excited for a while about his message, but I have a greater witness than John, my teachings and my miracles. In other words, his teachings and miracles testify for him, okay? The Father gave me these works to accomplish. Uh, the Father gave me these works to accomplish, and they proved that he sent me. And the Father who sent me has testified about me himself, you have never heard his voice or seen him face to face, and you do not have his message in your hearts because you do not believe me, the one he sent to you. See, there's that skepticism, there's that doubt. Verse 39, you search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life, but the scriptures point to me, yet you refuse to come to me to receive this life. You see, the Bible is holy, and the, the scriptures are amazing, but the scriptures are pointing to the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. So you don't put your faith in words and letters, in teachings and customs and traditions. We're putting our faith in Jesus. Jesus is the key to heaven. He is the key that unlocks the gate for us to be in heaven. It's Jesus, he is the word. He's saying, you guys know the Torah. You know the first five books of the, of the Old Testament. You know the words of the prophet and you're looking for eternal life and I'm standing right in front of you. That's what he's really trying to say. Will you believe me? So it takes faith that what he says is true and then it will be done. It's the wonder of his word. John 1, 10 through 13 says this. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, the Jews, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. In other words, the same Holy Spirit that created physical life in Mary comes into our lives to give us spiritual life. We are reborn and now have life with God through faith in Jesus Christ. So when you hear people say, what, I have to be a born again Christian, what does that mean? It means that you have to be born again in the spirit. You have to be given his spirit, his Zoe life. That's the Greek word for that. To have life in God, to have eternal life with him, you need the Holy Spirit inside you. When do you receive the Holy Spirit in your life? When you put your faith in Jesus Christ. A spiritual transaction takes place. It's the wonder of heaven. It's the wonder of God. It's the wonder of his word. And I can't explain it to you because God is God and he works in ways we do not work. But here's the reality. In the spiritual realm, when God looks at you as a believer in Christ, he sees that you're a child of God. His spirit is in your life. And, and Ephesians 1 says that you have to have the spirit in order to be identified as a child of God. So when we say be a born again Christian, we're saying die to your old life, put your faith in Jesus Christ, die to your old life and become a brand new person in God's eyes. It's all done by believing in the word, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Well, Ryan, I mean, do I get to see that? What's the sign? Like Mary got a sign, Elizabeth got a sign. Do I have a sign? There is one, there is one particular sign. You change. Your, your attitude towards God, towards sin, towards other people. I, I don't know how many people have told me this. Ryan, after I gave my life to Christ, after I truly believed, I'm different. Amen. 
Because the Holy Spirit comes in your life and gives you the desires to do what pleases God. Philippians 2.13. All right, and so that's, what you're, that's, that's the wonder of his word at work in your life. Praise the Lord. Now, let me, let me close with these takeaways. First of all, I think we should just praise God for his wonderful and faithful word because it came true. Jesus was born. Jesus lived a perfect life. He died for us on the cross. He rose again three days later. He ascended to the Father and he sent the Holy Spirit. He has delivered on every promise he has given us. Can we just praise God that he is a faithful God? <laughs> Amen. His word will never fail. Amen. Believe, number two, believe in the word of God. Believe in Jesus. Do not believe in your works. Do not believe that your good deeds saves you. Do not believe in your parents' faith. Yeah, my parents are Christians. Or yeah, I go to church. That doesn't save anyone. You have to give your life to Christ. Say, I'm done with my old life. I give you, God, my life. I give you, I want Jesus in my life, and I'm giving my life to Jesus. I'm putting my faith, my trust, my future in what Jesus already accomplished for me at the cross. I'm putting my faith in eternal life. That Jesus rose again, I'm going to rise again one day, forever. Jesus is coming back. And those who have faith in Christ, eternally you are clothed and ready for eternal life. That's our doctrine in 1 Corinthians 15. We'll get a brand new body. Right now, you already have eternal life. It's not fully realized yet. But when he comes back, you will fully experience. You will have a spiritual body that will be incorruptible, 1 Corinthians 15 says. It will not decay. It will live forever with him. Praise the Lord. The bodies that we're hurting in right now, my ear hurts right now, all right? I don't know what's going on in my ear. It's not an infection, I don't know what it is. I can't wait till heaven so I don't have to deal with allergies, sinuses, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can't wait. It's gonna be Christmas every day there too. Just minus some of the things we make Christmas about. Anyway, but thirdly, Jesus will accomplish what he has started in us. He who began a good work in you will finish it until completion, the word of God says. He started a work in you. Let him finish it and cooperate with him, right? We must continue to believe and we must continue. Here's why we must continue to believe. Because the devil will discourage you and make you think that everything God said wasn't true. Don't listen to the voice of the enemy. Listen to God, his word, his son, Jesus Christ. You have transferred into eternal life when you believe in Jesus Christ. Do not listen to the enemy. You must continue to trust in his word. Do not doubt. Fourth, I can keep you a little longer since it's raining so bad. <laughs> Commit yourself to trust and obey God's word and it will never fail you. Why am I saying this? Why is this a takeaway? Because Mary and Joseph, they didn't just believe in here. They believed right here. Their faith had action to it. They said, all right, let it be done. And you know what? They went through the process. Not perfect. I'm sure it wasn't perfect, but they went through the process. Amen? If the word of God says to do something, do it. You were here last week. You saw the baby dedication, right? The word of God put it on my heart to give. Well, guess what? You all gave to her too. Praise the Lord. Obey the promptings of the, did that come from, from like my a good idea? No, the Bible says to take care of those in the body of Christ and to help their needs. I didn't need a prophetic word to do a good deed to someone. The Bible says it. Take care of those around you, help those, be generous to those in need. Over and over again, the scripture says that. So we obey the word. I don't, I feel, I'm feeling compelled. Well, is it in the Bible? Then do it. You don't gotta have a special feeling. Am I right? Yes. Is my inflection of my voice helping? <laughs> no, that's a, I don't know, that's how I live. As soon as I start questioning it, that's when things go bad. When, I, when, I have the, when the Holy Spirit nudges me to do something that's in the word, 
and I start, oh, I don't know, God, what if they don't, what if they don't receive it? That's doubt. That's doubt. That's exactly what Zechariah did. Well, that's impossible. God does the impossible. Bet your bottom dollar on that. All right, lastly, these miracles are specific to the redemption story of God. By the way, I don't, I don't encourage betting or gambling of any sort, okay? Just <laughs> clearing that up. The, what we're reading about, the wonder of Christmas, the wonder of his word, uh, this was God bringing his redemption into the world, salvation, Jesus Christ. So these are very unique miracles. But I believe it encourages us to still believe in miracles and the impossible being done through faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, so here's my last point, all right? Don't lose hope or faith in miracles today. God's delay doesn't mean God's denial. And I have no idea if you said, mm hmm or yeah, I can praise the Lord, because I can't hear a thing, because it's so loud, the rain. God's delay doesn't mean his denial. That prayer for a child was a long time ago, and by God's grace, he chose to do this because he had a specific plan. So I'm not saying if you're 77 right now, maybe pray for a child already or something. I'm not saying that. If you, I don't even know if you wanna go through that again, you know. There is adoption, it's a great thing. I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying God can't do the impossible because I believe God has. I've watched God heal people. I've watched God do miracles in people's lives. Don't lose hope. Keep believing. I almost was, don't stop believing. <laughs> All right, anyway. Don't stop believing. Don't stop praying. His delay doesn't mean his denial. God is still a miracle worker. God is still saving souls. Why don't we stand together as we close? The miracle, another miracle that happened today is Pastor Ryan finished under, oh man, I got to 40 minutes. Uh, I was trying to do under 40. It's the miracle on Lebanon Road. I believe there could be people in this room right now Actually, I guarantee, I'm not even, I'm not just trying to guess, I feel a prompting that people in this room have allowed the voice of the enemy, the devil, to say God's word isn't gonna come true or God's word isn't true. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Christmas is proof that God's word never fails. We're reading true narratives, true stories that have happened, true events in human history. They're true backed up by scholarly evidence, archeological digs, the list goes on. There are so many books of the proof and the evidence of the birth of Christ, the cross of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, the church. Did you know that the, the people who persecuted Christians 300 years later became a Christian nation, Rome? Because the resurrection was so powerful, it changed an entire culture in Rome. Not perfectly, but it became a Christian people because of it, it's wild and God is so faithful to fulfill his word. He said that the gospel will go to the very ends of the earth. That's what he's doing. So he's not done working in your family's life. He's not done working in the people you've been praying for. He's not done working his miracles. Don't give up believing, amen? Amen. amen. Let's pray. Lord, we wanna take you out your word and we are taking your word because we're in here in there right now, in this room. We have believed that you have saved us by grace through faith alone in what you've done for us and we have received forgiveness and we have received eternal life and we just wanna say thank you. We praise you for delivering on your word. And Lord, I pray if anyone in here doesn't have that faith in you, that God, you, you would give them that faith right now that the word of God would invoke and provoke faith in you that your spirit would come into their life. God, that you would convict them of their sin and their current life and the things that need to change and they would put their faith in Jesus to change them because he already has begun and he already is working and he'll continue to finish it in our lives. 
God, I pray that people will give their life to Jesus if they need to in this room right now or online, that they would put their faith in Christ and ask him to be their Lord and Savior. Lord, help us to not give up praying and believing for miracles in our lives and our family and our community. And Lord, use this show today once again to just plant more seeds of your love, your forgiveness, your truth. As we sang today, your grace and truth that transforms us. God, I thank you that you deliver on your word. You'll continue to do so. And we can walk out of here with peace and trust that you never fail on your word. And we love you and thank you for everything. And God, give us a little break in this rain. Because <laughs> that's crazy. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Amen. Praise God.